Today, we're going to be turning this ordinary roof rack into a plywood hauling machine. Like, why don't they make them like this anyways? I have a few requirements that this project must meet. It needs to use the existing rack. Now I need to carry full plywood sheets, and I don't want to bother people with pickup trucks to haul for me. I also don't want a much larger footprint on the truck. So it needs to be expandable, out to more than four feet. Right now, if I go to get plywood, I have to have them cut it in half at the home center so I can get it home. Now I don't really have any place to put panels presently, except for, like right over there, in front of everything. But that's a job for another day. It also needs to be somewhat quiet. If it's expandable, that means something is gonna be able to move around because something needs to expand, something needs to move, and it's likely going to be metal on metal. I'll show what I mean by this later on in the video when I prototype this out, and also how I fix this issue. It also needs to be easy to use. Ratchet straps are already a pain in the butt to use. You have to take them out, you have to unwind them, you have to hook them on one side, you have to throw them on the other side, you have to and then deal with the little floppy thing on the end. And I just don't want the expandability of this thing to take a long time either. It also needs to be secure. Right now, I only really have these two tie-downs in the middle of the rack here, so that really rules out taking big pieces of anything on the highway. Bit of smoke! I've had this roof rack for over seven years for my Nissan Xterra. It was made by a company called Depep, which I think is now defunct. It has not come off the truck in that time, so it's rusted out and definitely, definitely needs to be repainted. Also, my roof rack has all that time's worth of lichen growing on it, so it's never been scrubbed. Blah. So this is also a good chance to clean off the roof of my truck. You know, since I'm taking the rack off. Here, you can see me trying to figure out how to get 50 plus pounds of steel off my roof without, you know, catching it in my face. My teeth are already bad enough as it is. They are, um, hockey player chic, and I have a face built for radio. So I don't need any more damage done there, make it any worse than it already is. Now that I've got that off the roof, I'm gonna give the bolts and bits an evapo rust bath, and then give them a paint job. But first, I have to do a little cleaning up off of these brackets that hold the roof rack on top of the truck. This is a whole section on grinding. It's like sanding, but with a lot more sparks. Hopefully you're not getting sparks when you're sanding wood, so watch out for that. I personally love to watch the use of an angle grinder, but if you don't, you can skip ahead to the next chapter at the time on the screen here to see the rest of this build. Some people dig it, some people don't. I have to clean the paint off this thing, and also the rust before I paint it. As you can see in the shots from the beginning of this video, over the past seven plus years, it's started to rust a bit. I'm not doing a super detailed strip the whole thing down to bare metal paint and rust removal, but just enough to clean up the spots where it's rusty, has loose paint, so I can recover it with a few new coats which should last for another few years at least. And here I'm starting to weld on the main crossbars. I say main like there's other crossbars. Like, no, it's just these two crossbars. There's no other crossbars. I absolutely love welding. I like that you can take two pieces of metal and join them together. The making can be subtractive. I love the additive parts of it. Like, you can take two smaller boards and make a larger board with glue. Like, that's just awesome to me. And again, metal. To be able to take two pieces of metal and join them together. Let's just call it what it is. That's just fudging. Cool. Although I still consider myself a newbie when it comes to welding. I'm not good at it. I'm terrible at it. And although I've gotten better. Going to hit pause here for a minute before I attempt to hide my crimes by grinding out these welds. Just look how terrible this weld is. Is it me? Is it the type of welding? Yes, it's partly me, it's partly the type of welding, FCAW. I'll link to a couple videos down below of some other great creators that covered FCAW welding. That'll do, pig. That'll do. But this is actually a good weld, and it'll hold. So, don't be disappointed if your welds look janky like this. 
you can grind them out and make them look pretty. Quick side note, this is my Porter Cable metal bandsaw. I restored this back to life after finding it at a flea market last year for 15 bucks. If you want to see the video, check it out below. But I absolutely love this thing. It has made working with metal so much easier. Helps to have that bit chucked in there securely, I guess. Here I'm making a test piece of the mechanism I'm going to use. This is just a prototype before doing the full thing. First cut some 6 inch pieces of 1 inch and 3 quarter inch tubular steel respectively and drill the 3 8 inch hole into each. Now here is the genius bit about this whole contraption. It's one of those press button spring snaps like you see on tent poles and kayak paddles. Brilliant, huh? I'm not one to toot my own horn here, which is why I definitely don't have an entire YouTube channel showing off the things I make, or an Instagram account. Doing some layout here with some blue die cam and a pair of dividers. I've actually had this blue die cam forever, but I always forget about it. A Sharpie would have also worked, but this just feels more legit. Are you Aaron Burr, sir? Again, now that I know that this mechanism works, I need to cut off about a foot on either end of the crossbars. I didn't know beforehand if this would work, and I could do the extendableness of them, so I left them at their full six-foot length and could always just use them as is. Just using a file here to remove the sharp edges and round out the ends of the bar a bit, I don't want it getting all rough and cutsy. Now just jumping head on into painting. Spraying down the ends to help cover the bare metal inside to help prevent rust. This is going to live outside and on the top of my truck. Painting the ends of the extension bars, that'll be the furthest away from the end, red, so there's a warning sign that I'm getting close to the end. Not that it's an issue if it does come out all the way, they pop back in easily enough, just looking out for future me. Garage workshops, am I right? The joys of sharing shop space with trash. In this case, the actual trash. Not my hoarding haven of trash. That is special trash. Drilling out the holes using this step bit and a hand drill, because uh, I cannot fit this beast down the drill press. And then playing whack-a-mole with the push button on the extension. I'm gonna keep this very brief. Brilliant. <laughs> After deburring the holes, I blow it all out with the air gun to get all the metal flakes out of the tubes. There it is in almost its finished painted glory. Got another couple coats to put on it. This thing is frickin' slick. Huh? Not going anywhere. Be perfect. I can now haul 4x8 sheets of plywood out of the Homey Depot or Lowe's with relative ease because I can now get them on my roof and tie them down. Here is how I'm going to handle the looseness and loudness of having the 3 quarter inch steel tubing inside of the 1 inch steel tubing by using this 1 and a quarter inch heat shrink tubing. This will make for a tighter seal as well as protect the metal from rubbing against each other, therefore keeping it from oxidizing. Yeah. 
Sorry about that, but I was super stoked to actually get here in this project. Since I'm almost about to put the final paint coats on, that means we're almost done. So that means soon I will have the capacity on my truck for the first time since owning it to be able to carry full sheets of plywood. This is awesome. You can see here, I had to glove up. Now, I absolutely love this spray paint. It goes on almost like a powder coat and sticks really good to just about any surface. However, the nozzle design is absolute sh**. And that's if it even works. And you can't swap them out that I'm aware of. As I'd had a couple fail to work, there is exactly a 50% chance that it's going to leak everywhere. It's installation time, it's installation time. Oops. Again, sorry, I'm so sorry. I'm excited to get this on my truck and even more excited to test it out. And while we're talking shop here, as you watch me put this thing back onto my truck, and we're not done yet, so don't go anywhere. If you like this video, please consider subscribing, or even checking out some of my other videos. I check my numbers often, and every single time I see that subscriber count number go up, just one, it makes me well up a little inside. That someone thinks enough of the work that I've done to maybe stick around and see what I do next, or how I'm possibly going to injure myself or at least just wants to be a part of our little club here. Thank you. Seriously, seriously, it means so much. Thank you. And yes, I keep calling my vehicle a truck. Technically, it's an SUV, but it is built on the Frontier pickup truck frame, so it is a truck. I'm not talking about the small crossover -y things as trucks. Let me know in the comments what camp you're in. Respectfully, of course. If mid-sized to large SUVs are considered trucks in your opinion, or if they aren't, you know where I stand. Now let's review our checklist and make sure we got all the requirements that we needed to hit for this project. It's using the existing roof rack. It's extendable. And some are quiet with those heat shrink rubber tube wraps. It's easy to use. You've seen me play with this about a hundred times by now if you're watching this. Thank you for watching. And it's secure. I got some plywood home without having to do Jenga with my truck to get a full sheet back from the home center. And they didn't have to cut in a half and me hook it onto the center of the roof rack. And we have a bonus for this one. It's heavy duty as well. Most aftermarket racks you can get for your cars, you can get them in steel, but most aftermarket racks are made of aluminum. And if they do have ones that extend out there, that's gonna be aluminum extensions. And those are no bueno. You can bump those, they get bent easily. These are just a lot stronger than aluminum. And if you need to, you can take them off entirely. Cause they do that too. I'm super happy with this little welding and roof rack refurbishment project here. Why didn't I do this sooner? Literally wow. the worst weld ever. Right. My welding used to be terrible. At least it's passable now. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Thank you for watching. Hi, I'm Troy McClure. Hi, I'm Troy McClure. You might remember me from such videos as this one. Thank you for watching.